Well, 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 look who's back. You're in luck. As you can probably tell from the title and this very short Blender introduction, it totally didn't take me hours and hours to make. I've got another boss guide for you. This time, Calvarian is the target, the last of the three new wilderness bosses. Before we start though, I want to once again say thanks for all the support that you guys have given me over the last few weeks. With this being my fourth video, we're already above 300 subscribers, and my spindle guide is now my most watched video, having just hit 10k views. You guys are amazing, and I have so much more videos coming up, with hopefully the first video of my brand new series releasing somewhere in the next week. Be sure to subscribe to not miss any of the action. Anyways, you're probably here because you're off this nice Void Waker blade, am I right? I won't keep you waiting any longer, let's crack on with the guide. As per usual, we start off with my plugins again. This is the same as my Spindle and Arteo guide, so I advise you to turn on NPC Indicator, Tile Indicator and the Player Indicator plugin. Be sure to put Calvarian in the NPC text box and have Highlight True Tile enabled for both NPC Indicator and the Tile Indicator plugin. It's a lot easier to dodge Calvarian's big attacks with these settings enabled. You can enable Highlight Others in the Player Indicator plugin to make it easier to spot PKers. Now over to my inventory and gear. For Calvarian, we use a different setup compared to my previous two wilderness boss guides. Since Calvarian is an undead, we can use the self amulet E. This means we do not need to use our Slayer Helmet when killing Calvarian, since the damage and accuracy bonuses of those items do not stack. The self amulet E gives a 20% bonus for both damage and accuracy against undeads, so be sure to use that. Calvarian is weak to crush, just like Spindle, so we bring in some cheap gear with good crush bonuses, like the mythical cape and the dwarf helmet. Ferocious gloves, primordial boots and the abyssal bludgeon are my three expensive items. You can bring a fourth if you want of course, but as you will see right now, I got one shot by another PVMer because I was camping around 50 HP, and without protect item enabled you can easily lose your fourth item, which is why I'm only bringing three for this fight. A few people have commented on my previous guides about the Figuras and the Ursine Chain Mage being so much more powerful compared to the Bludgeon, which of course is 100% true. This guide however, is made to kill Calvarian with almost completely no risk beside your supplies, so I will not use the Chain Mage here. You can of course upgrade your gear, which will make the kill significantly easier, but also increases your risk quite a bit. I bring a Black Dragonite body and chaps for some magic protection against PKers, a Ring of Jeweling for easy teleports to the Ferox Enclave, and any blessing for some additional prayer bonus. For my inventory, I bring 6 brews, 8 super restores, 9 pieces of high healing food, a stamina potion, a one click teleport that works above level 20 wilderness, and a looting bag. I also bring 2 super combat potions, but if you're a bit more experienced with the fight and do not take regular damage anymore, you can swap these for divine super combats. With this setup, you risk around 25k with protect item enabled if we're only looking at your gear. If you do not have protect item enabled, for example if you get one shot like I did, you still risk only about 70k. Since we're killing Calvarian with melee only, you do not need to bring your imbued self amulet. Don't be stupid like me, since I lost my imbued amulet when I got killed without protect item. Only bring your self amulet E. Your risk with a full inventory of food is around 160k, if you have protect item enabled. If you don't have protect item enabled, it will increase to around 205k, which means your total risk, including the looting bag, will be around 250k. To get to Calvarian, we can exit the Ferrex Enclave from both the north and the east exit. Calvarian's tomb is on the graveyard to the north, and you can almost instantly click the tomb when you're leaving the enclave. If you have more than 30 kills, you can check to see if the cave is empty. If you do not have 30 kills yet, you will have to hop worlds to find an empty tomb. You spawn a lot closer to the exit compared to Spindle and RTO, so running out and hopping outside is a lot quicker. You can also still hop inside the tomb, which is similar to the explanation I gave in my Spindle guide, so please check that video if you want to walk through on how to find an empty world. If you find an empty world, turn on your prayer, which for this fight is only piety, and preserve if you are not using Divine Super Combats. All of Calvarian's attacks are AoE attacks, which means they are 100% dodgeable, and you can technically take zero damage, even without any overhead prayers enabled. When I was recording the footage for this video, I did not know there wasn't any need for protection prayers, which is why you will see me with Protect from Melee active in all of the clips. This is however not needed, and only helps against his dogs, which I will discuss in a bit. Calvarian will use a magic based AoE attack most of the time. This will summon 5 lightning attacks in the room, indicated by the circles on the ground. This attack will always hit a 3x3 radius around each circle, and one of these circles will always spawn within at least one tile of your character, which means you will have to move to a new position after every attack. Your own true tile indicator comes in handy for this part, since it can be quite hard to see on which tile your character is actually standing, as you are constantly moving around the room. When I was first starting out with this boss, I did not like the constant moving around, but after some practice it became fairly easy. Just keep in mind that the lightning strike will hit one tick after the circle spawns, so you only get one tick of running animation to move away from the circles. This means that you can only move one or two tiles away, and you should not try to skip over the circles to outrun them, since the lightning will hit you before you're far away enough. The lightning attacks do a lot less damage if you're adjacent to them and not standing directly in the lightning, so try to always get at least one tile away from the circles. It is also possible to move on the same tick that Calvarian summons the AoE attack. This will result in a circle spawning on your old location, which could mean you don't have to move a second time. 
be aware however that you can still run into a new circle, so always check to see if your early move has put you in a safe position. Calvarian's second AoE attack is a big melee slam. He will face a certain direction, based on the player's position, and summons black shadows on multiple tiles in the direction he is facing. This attack will also land one tick later, so you have to move quickly again to avoid getting hit. If you get hit by this attack, you will not only take quite substantial damage, but you are also unable to attack Calvarian or his dogs for a few seconds. There are a few patterns available for this AoE attack, and since they are based on Calvarian's position and on your own position, you can try to force certain patterns by standing on specific tiles when you see Calvarian charge this attack. I will discuss these tiles in the tips and tricks section at the end of the guide. If you are not standing on any of the black tiles when his attack lands, you will dodge all damage. However, you can also not be standing under Calvarian, even though these tiles are not marked with a black shadow. This is the reason we turn on the True Tile Indicator plugin for Calvarian as well. You once again have one tick to move, so do not try to run straight through the boss, because you will not make it past his hitbox before his attack lands, meaning you will take damage and will be unable to attack for a few seconds. The easiest way to dodge his most common pattern while still being able to do damage is stand on the side of his hitbox and moving one tile further to the side and one or two tiles up. You should always move towards the side that you are already standing at, since you will not be able to make it to the other side without getting hit. Simply running two tiles away from the boss is also a viable way to dodge his attack. This does mean however that you cannot damage the boss since you are not standing next to him anymore. If you want more in-depth tactics about dodging this pattern, check out the tips and tricks section later in the video. At around 50% of his health, Calvarian will summon two of his undead dogs. He will be completely immune to all damage until these dogs are dead, so be sure to focus on the dogs right away. Since they are also undead, you should be able to hit them down quite easily, and with my Abyssal Bludgeon I was able to one-hit them very often. If you are on a Skeleton Slayer task, be aware that these dogs also count towards that task, and since Calvarian will summon 4 dogs during the fight, you are killing 5 skeletons for every boss kill. These dogs do hit with normal melee attacks, so turn your protect from melee when he spawns them. When Calvarian gets to 0% of his health, he will turn into a different color and you will basically have to do the whole fight again. During his phase switch, he summons a lot of his lightning AoE attacks in a circle around him. Be sure you avoid this attack, since you can quite easily get hit by multiple targets at the same time, which can be very deadly. One easy way to dodge this attack is by stepping under Calvarian whenever you get him to 0 health, since the middle area of the circle is safe from all the AoE attacks. In the second phase, he will continue with both his AoE attacks, and he will summon his dogs around 50% health again. And if you get up to 0% for a second time, you will have finally defeated him. Now here's a quick summary of the fight. You do not need any protection prayers, except for when Calvarian spawns his dogs. Avoid the AoE lightning on the floor. There will always be at least one circle spawning within one tile of you, so be constantly moving. Dodge the big AoE melee attack by moving one or two tiles to the side or backwards. Do not try to run through Calvarian. Focus his dogs whenever he spawns them. Avoid the big lightning attack when he changes form. And repeat the entire fight one more time to get the kill. Now let's get over to the loot section. Just like Arteo, there are a few unique drops from Calvarian. The Dragon Pickaxe, Skull of Vetion and the Ring of the Gods are all worth a decent amount, but the big money item is the Void Waker Blade, which is just above 55 mil at the time of recording this video. Calvarian also has a lot of supply drops, which means you can lengthen your trips by quite a bit. His most valuable non-unique drop is the 60 noted Renner Weed drops, worth just over 350k. In order to minimize your risk, I suggest banking often, especially since it's very easy to get back to the tomb and continue your kills. What to do when a PKer shows up? My first tip when dealing with other players is to eat up whenever a seemingly normal player enters your cave. As I mentioned before, I got one hit by a PVMer with a Void Waker, so eating up to at least 80 hit points is a good start. Of course, trying to teleport out whenever a PKer enters is the best thing to do, but since Calvarian's tomb is quite a lot smaller than the other wilderness boss areas, and you enter in the middle of the area, I find it a bit harder to escape PKers in this cave. If you get teleblocked however, you can still try to escape by running out of the cave and aim for either the Ferox Enclave, the Corporeal Beast Cave, the Edge of the Wilderness or the Chaos Altar. To enter the Enclave you have to outlast the entire teleblock duration of the PKer, which might be quite hard, so it's better to just keep on running to any of the other escape options. You can only enter the Corporeal Beast Cave if you're out of combat, which is not very likely, but still an option if you get lucky. If you bring a Chaos Talisman with you and make it to the Chaos Altar, you are able to enter this altar even if you're teleblocked. This is a great way to escape, however you do need to sacrifice an inventory spot for the talisman. Another way to make surviving PKers a lot easier is by camping to protect from magic prayer during your fights. This will of course drain your prayer a lot faster, but whenever you do get teleblocked, the spell will only last for 2.5 minutes instead of the full 5. Now for some tips and tricks. In order to try to bait certain melee AoE attacks from Calvarian, you have to stand on specific tiles when he starts moving to cast his attack. Calvarian will always turn to face you, and you can either stand on his weapon side or on his shield side. If you stand on any of his weapon side tiles, he will spawn shadows right in front of him. 
If you stand on a shield side and stand on either the middle or the outer tile, he will also do an AoE attack aimed in front of him. However, now in front of a shield side. Dodging this attack is similar to the attacks on his weapon side. When you stand on the most inner tile of his shield side, however, he will summon his attack to the side, meaning half of it will go on his shield side and half of it will go on his weapon side. This is the attack I find the easiest to dodge, since you just have to move two tiles to the side and you can still attack Calvarian while dodging this attack. Once you get the hang of positioning yourself in this way, it will be a lot easier to dodge this attack and keep on doing damage to Calvarian, which will result in faster kills. When Calvarian starts summoning his dogs, your last hit will not do any damage to him, even if his dogs are not yet summoned. The Abyssal Bludgeon is too slow to get another hit in before he summons his dogs, so it's a waste of an attack when you already know his summon attack is incoming, based on Calvarian's HP percentage. In this case, it is more useful to click away from Calvarian, cancelling your attack. By doing this, your attack will immediately be ready to hit his dogs, instead of having to wait for your attack cooldown to run out. And once again, that's all I got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this low risk Calvarian guide. I've had a ton of fun making the guide, especially learning Blender, and I've put so many hours of my life in this video. So if you enjoyed the video, or if it helped you in any way, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. Liking the video and commenting also helps a lot in order to get my video to reach a bigger audience, so any of those would be highly appreciated. As I've mentioned, I'm working on a new series which takes a lot of work, but I think it will be an absolute blast to make and I hope you guys will enjoy watching it as well. I'm hoping to release the first video somewhere in the next weekend, so be sure to subscribe in order to not miss any of it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon.